Oh my god. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. The Commanders have a quarterback. Jaden Daniels is him. I am so pumped and honestly just in complete shock. I mean, I'm feeling vibes of 2012 right now. The Commanders go in to Cincinnati, win 38 to 33, and Jaden Daniels puts on an absolute show. I felt more emotion from this game, maybe that I've felt since 2015, 2012, and the peak of Kirk Cousins and the peak of RG3 as a rookie. And there's been so many years of quarterback questions and bad quarterback play and it feels like Jaden Daniels is the right one it feels like Washington might have gotten the best quarterback in the draft it feels like Washington is headed towards the trajectory of being a good football team and it feels so good I don't think anybody really did expect Washington to win this game first and foremost everything you saw of experts picking this game picked Washington to lose and even when you look at Vegas lines they had the Bengals winning pretty big that's obviously not what happened and honestly coming into the game I didn't quite understand why the line was so big I don't even think that was a Washington being good type thing because I really don't think Washington has looked that good at least offensively um at least when it comes to scoring touchdowns I guess for the last few weeks but Cincinnati hasn't looked that good either it felt like they absolutely no matter what had to win this football game and instead I think Washington really put the final nail in the coffin for the Bengals what are you doing Bearing you. I'm alive, man. I'm alive. You're waking the neighbors. No. Shut up. They are 0 in 3. Now, they've had some poor starts under Joe Burrow, sure. They've never been 0 in 3. The last time they were 0 in 3 was in 2019 when they basically got the pick for Joe Burrow. This is a complete change. They have been playing close football games and they still just haven't won. 0 in 3, and two of those losses are to the Patriots and the Commanders. Quite literally, the second in the third worst teams in football last season. I think they're really starting to hit the panic button there, but what a win. Jaden Daniels, you can't even really fault the Bengals. I mean, he played out of his mind. This is one of the best rookie performances we've seen for a quarterback. He played incredible. No matter whether you're looking at the stat sheet or just his plays on actual paper, Jaden Daniels put on an absolute show. What if I told you Jaden Daniels had more touchdowns than incompletions? Yes, more touchdowns than incompletions. It's not like he wasn't throwing the ball. He was 21 of 23, threw for 250 yards, threw two touchdowns. I know he hasn't thrown a touchdown until this week, yada, 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 and Jaden does it. Still has not turned the ball over a single time this year. Throws for two touchdowns, rushes for another touchdown, rushes for 39 yards. He just looked fantastic, and he had the entire offense just clicking. And finally, for the first time this year, we saw Terry McLaurin starting to cook. We've been wondering when he was going to get going. We were wondering when the offense was finally going to start really looking Terry's way. Tonight was that night. He had a 55-yard catch on an absolute bomb. Now, he had two amazing, amazing plays. You had the first play, which was the 55-yard bomb. That ended up being a Jaden Daniels touchdown run. It put Washington up 11 late in the first half, and it really felt like, hey, like we have a serious chance to win this football game. We're playing pretty well. The offense is clicking. We're moving pretty well. Then we have the second touchdown, which was just an absolute dagger. We're talking talking about the same field as the RG3 touchdown run against the Minnesota Vikings in 2012, and it just felt so right. I mean, I was feeling all of these emotions that I have not felt in so long for really any sports team, probably since 2022 when Virginia Tech won the ACC championships. Last time I really felt these emotions. As for as a Washington fan, I don't think I felt these emotions maybe since 2012. I would say maybe 2015 and some of those Kirk Cousins really good teams, but this was absolutely incredible. Jaden Daniels, has given me a ton of hope for this season, for the future, for everything in Washington. And I just can't believe this offense was able to put together 38 points on the Bengals. I mean, just what an absolutely incredible game. And Terry McLaurin, I mean, the dagger at the end of the game felt incredible. The commanders were very aggressive here. And that's what I absolutely loved. They went for the kill shot a couple times in the fourth quarter. Early in the fourth quarter, Washington hit a field goal. We ended up going up 31 to 20 off of the field.
field goal. But before that, I loved it. They took a deep shot to Terry. Now it went out of bounds. It wasn't a great throw by Jaden, but I think he was just trying to put it in a good spot where only Terry could get it. And I really like the play call. I mean, instead of going, hey, we're going to try to pick up this first. We're going to go for the field goal. Cliff Kingsbury basically decided we're going to go for the kill shot here. If we score a touchdown here, this thing's about over and we're good with that. Obviously they don't get it. And that's when I really did start to worry a little bit after the Bengals in less than two minutes, go down and score a touchdown. Jamar Chase, 31 yard touchdown catch from Joe Burrow. They go for two. They don't get it. We're up five. And it's like, man, the offense has to get moving. And Washington responds with a very, very long drive. It gave me kind of shades of that Tampa Bay Bucks Washington drive back in 2022 when we played Tampa and actually Taylor Heineke beat Tom Brady. It was a fantastic drive. And then, oh my goodness, third and seven. It feels like we're about to just settle for this field goal. We're going to go up eight. We're going to have to get the stop with about two minutes left. Bengals have their timeouts, yada, yada, yada. And the play, Terry McLaurin, 27 yard pass. They're running cover zero. Free guy off the edge, drills Jaden Daniels. Free rusher, stays in the pocket, delivers a perfect pass. Touchdown, Terry McLaurin, 27 yards, right in the basket, an absolute beauty. And that essentially wins the game right there. The Bengals go down, they get a late one, they go for the outside kick, they don't get it. What a game, what a win. This feels like a momentum changing game for the course of this franchise that we've been waiting on for so long. See, I was born in 1999. The last time that I saw my football team that I desperately love so much win a playoff game was in the 2004 season, man. I don't even really remember that. I remember some of the players that played on that team. Sean Taylor had a big play in that game. I mean, it was a very, very long time ago. We've had some chances since then, but it's just been decades of problems for Washington. And the first part was getting rid of Dan Snyder. He's gone. Now we have a new coach. Ron Rivera's gone. It's Dan Quinn. I really like Dan Quinn. You know, I did want Ben Johnson, but Dan Quinn, he's just a people's person. He's a leader. He gives me a lot of Dan Campbell vibes. And we're talking about a guy that's already been fantastic as a defensive coordinator for the Seahawks, the Legion of Boom, for the Cowboys when they've been really good. And of course, he took the Falcons to a Super Bowl. He knows what he's doing. He's done a great job in his NFL career. I'm happy to have him as our head coach. And I'm happy to have Cliff Kingsbury. I'm feeling really good about the direction of this team. This was such a good matchup with it being on Monday night. Of course, they had to share this slate with the Bills and the Jacks but this was incredible because you had it on Monday night and you had Joe Burrow and Jaden Daniels, these two guys that both won Heisman trophies, had very similar times at LSU. And it was cool to see them have to match up. It was cool to see them interact after the game and Jaden Daniels just absolutely played fantastic. I think the Bengals played really well on offense too. The commanders were awful on defense. We were missing a few corners. Obviously, Emmanuel Forbes is out, whether you view that as a good thing or a bad thing. What do you mean by that? But we're banged up. We're missing Cleland Farrell. You know, there's a lot of players that, and pieces that are missing. Of course, the Bengals are also missing their two defensive tackles. So it kind of goes both ways. After that first drive of the game, Bengals go right down. Jamar Chase catches a 41-yard touchdown pass. I was like, oh, it's going to be one of those games. It's going to be a long day. And no, it, it wasn't. They figured it out. I think they really started playing kind of over the top, which I really liked. Basically said, hey, if you're going to beat us, beat us with short stuff, you're going to have to run the ball. And it worked. We got a really big break when Evan McPherson missed that one field goal. And it really did feel like either we keep scoring and we're going to win this game or we're never going to stop the Bengals. And we really never did stop the Bengals. And you have to say, Washington continuing to score on every single drive. We scored on every single drive for two straight weeks. Tress Way, our punter, has not punted since week one. And even funny, you look at what Cam Taylor Britt said before this game. Of course, one of the quarterbacks on Cincinnati who was talking a lot of crap before the game and basically called Washington's offense a college offense and that they weren't asking Jaden Daniels to do much because he's young. No, oh, they don't trust him yet. Well, you'll never guess who got beat on the first Terry McLaurin huge play of the game. Of course, it was Taylor Britt. Honestly, I kind of respect that he didn't even walk his comments back after the game. I think he was kind of humbled by it, which was cool. He earned some respect points in my book, but it was just a weird thing to say. He's got to stop giving other teams bulletin board material. But I can't tell you how important this win feels for Washington. It feels like it's really dug the Bengals all the way down at 0-3, and all of a sudden, Washington is 2-1. and We're still leading the NFC East for two straight weeks now. We're going to the next week, leading the NFC East with that NFC East record tiebreaker. The vibes are just so high, and it feels like we have a quarterback. I'm feeling and seeing things that I haven't felt and seen really since RG3. And that is the period that made me love football. You know, I was 12 years old. I was kind of always into football, especially, you know, the Redskins growing up. And that 2012 season just brought everything together. It's the most fun I've ever had watching football. And I feel like this could be another year like that. I feel like Jaden Daniels is the right guy. He's been by far the best rookie quarterback so far. You know, he's 100% outplayed Caleb Williams. Funny enough, 
Caleb Williams is the one that told his putter, you know, he's not going to have to punt often. Clearly, that hasn't been the case. They've been punting a lot over in Chicago. It's been in Washington where they're not punting. They're scoring every drive. They're beating the Cincinnati Bengals. They're 2-1. Two 2-1. and one. Two and one, Huge win. Jaden Daniels is the man. Jaden Daniels is him. And I could not be more excited for the future in Washington.